The fast food business is a cutthroat world. The restaurants are always changing, and sometimes it's their uniforms, and other times it's their look inside and outside of their locations. They're also not afraid to experiment with changes on the menu. Nothing really seems to be off limits. We've seen McDonald's dive into the seafood, Mexican, and Italian food markets with very little success. Nonetheless, it will never stop them or any other chain from experimenting with something new. In this video, we are going to take a look at some of the forgotten failures in the fast food industry. Taco Bell has had a lot of additions to their menu over the years, and they aren't just tacos and burritos anymore. They even tried their hand at Mexican pizza, and eventually it was removed from the menu. Later this month, that pizza will be brought back to the menu for those that loved it. One of Taco Bell's more famous slogans has been, Think outside the bun. That's pretty interesting when you think about their item that had a bun. In the mid-1970s to the mid-1990s, they had the Bell Beefer. It was essentially on a hamburger bun and had meat, diced onions, shredded lettuce, and mild border sauce. They also had a Supreme, which added diced tomatoes and grated cheese. Some of the coastal locations had the Beefer Surf and the Turf Deluxe, which added fried shrimp and a scoop of tuna on top of the lettuce, as well as taco tartar sauce. It was more of a sloppy joe than a burger. These items were decently popular at first, but by the late 1980s, the sales declined. In the early 2010s, they reintroduced this item as the Bell Burger, and it was part of the dollar menu in 2012. This sandwich was loved by folks in San Francisco, and they were pretty upset when it was last removed from the menu. After it was canceled, they protested with organized restaurant sit-ins called Stank Festivals. In 1986, Taco Bell also tried their hand in another oceanic delight with the Taco Bell Seafood Salad. This tortilla bowl was filled with shrimp, whitefish, crab, and taco toppings. However, it did not remain on the menu long because of multiple cases of food poisoning. Certainly sounds a bit fishy, and that's enough to make anyone crabby. In 1997, Taco Bell attempted to get fancy with an upscale sister chain called Border Bell in order to compete with Chevy's Fresh Mexican restaurants. The location of this restaurant was in Mountain View, California, which is in the heart of the Silicon Valley. Needless to say, customers did not like this part fast food and part Chevy's knockoff restaurant. The exact same year it opened, it converted from Border Bell to Taco Bell. Taco Bell certainly isn't the only fast food restaurant to experiment with a sister restaurant concept. In the late 1960s, Colonel Sanders tried to make the leap from chicken to beef. In 1970, there were about a hundred Kentucky Roast Beef restaurants spread throughout the country. Their first location was opened in Las Vegas in 1968, and it did really well there. Not only were they selling Kentucky Roast Beef, but they were also selling Kentucky Ham. They also tested Kentucky Fish, so it was quite a variety there. The recipes still included the Colonel's famous herbs and spices. The chain failed just because of prices with their own company. The roast beef sandwiches sold for 79 cents, while KFC had two pieces of chicken, potatoes and gravy, and a biscuit for 85 cents. So in 1970, they folded just two years after their first location of Kentucky Beef opened. Some of the locations were sold off, while others converted into Kentucky Fried Chicken. The locations that converted into KFC carried some of the old signage for years. Not only that, but they continued to sell the roast beef and ham sandwiches up until the late 1970s. It's strange to think that we could have had KFCs and KRBs all over the place. Kentucky Fried Chicken also experimented with spare ribs in the 1970s when they sold their country-style ribs. Some former employees described the ribs as having a secret recipe of KFC's flour and spices on them and then deep fried under pressure. Then they were removed and saturated with barbecue sauce and they warmed them up for a little while so the sauce would soak in. There are some big fans of this product that would love to see it come back including former employees and customers. 
The exact reason as to why these disappeared is not completely understood. Perhaps it was the prep time, or possibly it was the extra space needed to store the pork products. In 1978, Wendy's went to war with the Colonel. The fast food burger chain tested a new spinoff called Sister's Chicken and Biscuits in Columbus, Ohio. The chain didn't do too bad, but it folded in 1987. The restaurants are long gone, but some people still miss the flaky biscuits and perfectly fried chicken. McDonald's doesn't have it. Wendy's doesn't have it. I bet nobody else has it, Bob Euchre proclaimed in the Burger King television commercial for the flame-broiled meatloaf sandwich. This long, onion-covered meatloaf patty was unveiled in 1992, but it wasn't at the home plate long before it struck out. Around the same time the meatloaf sub sank, Burger King tried to get a little more fancy with tableside service and Burger King dinner baskets. One of those options was actually the meatloaf sandwich, but they also had the shrimp dinner basket and the steak sandwich dinner basket. Burger King really tried hard to encourage families to eat in and dine in on their upscale orders. While the patrons waited for their dinner, they could munch on some complimentary popcorn. These upscale dinner baskets and tableside waiting probably failed because they didn't have wine in a box. Pizza Hut was one of the innovators when it came to fast food pizza. The whole idea started in Wichita, Kansas, and soon Pizza Hut and their pizza recipe would be all over the place. For years, everyone was trying to catch up with the pizza giant. In the mid-1980s, Pizza Hut tried to change things up with their Chicago-style pizza. This deep-dish-style pizza was called the Priazzo. It certainly sounds Italian, but the word was completely made up. The name may have actually confused customers, but it was unlike any other pizza at the time. It had two layers of dough, pepperoni, mushrooms, onions, spinach, ham, bacon, tomatoes, and one full pound of cheese. Pizza Hut described it as sort of a pie, while others described it as a quiche, lasagna, or some strange pizza. They were hoping that this new pizza would boost sales, and it did for a while, but by 1993 it disappeared altogether from their Pizza Hut locations. If we have learned anything from these experiments, it would have to be that these fast food restaurants will never cease in trying new items or concepts in order to have an edge on the market. All of them have had some success doing that, but they've also had some failures. However, it does seem to be a necessary business strategy for survival. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this little walk down memory lane.